the stuff we're about to show you today is a uh, full R&D investigation into the um, catastrophic damage of capital ships. There's uh, some very specific uh, milestones and goals that we try to accomplish with this because there is a high level plan to have uh, fully, fully explorable dead ships, not only in space but also on, on planet surfaces. The idea behind the, the R&D work was initiated, shall we say, from a key point in, in the story. Um, it was something that I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. So we know we wanted to achieve these things for the PU and why not try and um, do the same for, for, for some parts of the story. So the, the starting point was we've obviously got a lot of capital ship material that we can use, um, ranging from the Idris to the Javelin to the Bengal. Um, the, key, the key point is that we didn't want to have to recreate everything from scratch. So you could, for example, take an environment or a ship and go, OK, this is 100% this is damage now and start again. You would get a very good result that way. But what we wanted to do is we really wanted to push strong reuse of existing assets, simple shader swaps and full, full use of VFX and lighting to, to push a mood and a feel into these areas. By default, uh, when I went around a lot of the, the different departments and I spoke to them about the catastrophic damage, the default thought that comes to everyone's head is it's on fire. Um, everything is burning to ashes and um, no one can escape and or get out or get in and that's that's great but if you study um, real world reference such as aircraft carriers, big ships in, in, in the ocean, um, oil rigs, they have very advanced fire retardant systems um, that's, that's more than capable of essentially putting catastrophic fires out so fire crews can get in um, and not only does that kind of make things accessible but it also kind of opens opportunity to have lots of wet surfaces that we can then, with the light going out, play with very kind of clever lighting techniques to, to try and like kind of push a mood that, that, that we're after, which is dark, dead, slow. It should kind of work. The, the, the environment that, that you're used to should now be working against you. So this is, these are the things that we're trying to create. As mentioned, first we, we looked at a lot of real world reference, such as oil rigs, large structures that, that, that can put themselves out, like, like aircraft carriers. Obviously that's not enough. Uh, there's a wealth of films and reference that we can kind of look at and, and pull inspiration from. I'm lucky enough to have worked on, 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 on some of those, so um, much, like, much, much like the cap. But the, 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 the real kind of mood and feeling came from a lot of kind of Ridley Scott stuff. And if, if the wheel isn't broken, I don't believe in, in fixing it. So we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of inspiration from IP such as Alien, Blade Runner, um, all, all, the, all the 80s classic uh, sci-fi films, should we say? I hope that gives you an insight into the the work that's gone into the R and D uh, for the catastrophic damage effects. Uh, it's a huge collaborative approach between uh, a lot of departments, not just art, but also. Ali and his team and Mike and his team with the VFX. Uh, seeing everyone come together to kind of produce these results is, is awe-inspiring and I hope you liked it. Hi, so for the last couple of months the graphics team have been working on a bunch of features to improve the quality of the lighting predominantly so we can uh, get some better visuals in the downed ships or the crashed ships. Um, this mainly comes down to improving the particle lighting and for our VFX team, which uh, we've added some volumetric features there to really make it stand out, especially when we've got all the fog and other effects going. And the other part of what we've been working on is to improve the, the bloom and lens flares to give a better glare when you look at these bright lights, which we get in these very dark and broken ships. When you think of a derelict or crashed spaceship, Probably one of the first things you can picture is the atmospheric lighting, with shafts of light in the smoky, mangled aftermath. So it was clear that this would be an area of technology we would need to focus on to achieve that look. The first improvement we wanted to make was on the lighting of our particle effects. Previously, they had used their own lighting system, which didn't support many of the usual features of our lights. So for example, we'd be missing crucial shadows or the brightness of the lights would be incorrect. 
The rest of the engine, however, uses a system called tiled lighting, which can efficiently cope with hundreds of light sources. And so we adapted this system so that we could use it on our particle effects too. And this really helped us tie the particle lighting in with the rest of the art much better. However, because particles are really just approximations of volumes, we decided to go one step further and apply volumetric lighting by sampling the lighting many times across each particle's volume. This gives every light the ability to cast light shaft within every particle effect. The other big change we've made is to improve our bloom and flare effect, which simulates the glare and bounces of light you get due to the imperfections within a camera or the human eye. There are generally two approaches to flares, artist-driven and procedural. CryEngine's base flare implementation is artist-driven and blends and distorts many textures on top of each other to create complex flares that can look great in the right conditions, but also aren't physically based and so don't simulate the actual light shape or respond correctly to other effects such as depth of field and motion blur. Procedural techniques, on the other hand, are generated by code purely based off the higher dynamic range image data and therefore give accurate highlight shapes and respond to other effects as expected. However, procedural techniques usually look quite simplistic due to their cost. So we came up with an efficient method of generating physically based flares where each individual element can be customized to exhibit a wide range of physically based distortions and color shifts. Yet the whole system still runs faster than our previous system. So hopefully you can see the benefits of all the new tech and hopefully it'll be with you soon in the next few weeks in the next release. I've been working on the um, sound design for the ambience inside the Idris. Um, and specifically the last few days I've been working on the various damage levels across the ship. So from 10% uh, damage right up to 100%. And today I'm going to show you the more extreme of those damage states. And that's the Idris on a really, really bad day. So here we are on the Idris. And obviously, looking around, something pretty catastrophic has happened. So this is the audio design for a very damaged, uh, crashed, in fact, Idris. And we'll fly through the level now, nice and slowly, so you can soak up the ambience. And I'll keep the chat to a minimum. Once again, with this version of the address, the emphasis has been on detail and creating a very positional 3D environment to explore. And this approach of using hundreds upon hundreds of individual sound spots to create the audio environment does give you this sort of 3D positional thing, but it gives you a great sense of depth. And as you approach many of these sound spots, their character changes, they brighten as you get closer to them, and we bring in lots more layers of detail. So as you examine something and get closer to it, it opens up and you see and hear more information. So just for a moment, let's uh, remind ourselves what it's like at the other end of the damage spectrum on board the Idris on a good day. And you can hear that it's a pretty serene experience. It's a calm, gentle ambience. The, the ship's humming away nicely.
but as we start to bring up the procedural damage in the audio, things start to rattle and hum and the ambience changes uh, dramatically. The whole feel of the ship changes. Much more tension. These electrical boxes on the wall rattling and vibrating in different ways. Again, reflected in hundreds of sound spots across the ship that all have this dynamic character which uh, morphs and changes to reflect the health of the ship. So right now, let's have a look back on the, uh, the catastrophically damaged Idris. Let's take a quick look behind the scenes. So here you can see we've got some emergency fire sprinkler sounds. Um, and there's a particle system right here. And that has a sound of the sprinkler associated with it. But here on the floor is an auxiliary sound. That is the sound of uh, the water drops splashing and hitting other surfaces. So, you know, there's these different dimensions to even simple ambient sounds such as a fire sprinkler. So hopefully that's given you a sense of um, what we're doing to bring the ship alive, really, um, and take our immersion to the next level. So, yeah, thanks.